Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. I received a package and uh, it arrived, and uh, I remembered what it was. It was something cool. So I put it aside, and I haven't done anything with it. And that's because it's part of a retro machine. And I really wanted to spend a bit of quality time with this before I just shoved it in. And I'm using it to replace GoTech. Oh, that's lovely. That's a lovely bit of packing, isn't it? Is that wallpaper? I like that. I'm going to start using wallpaper to pack stuff because think about it. It's tough. You've got loads of it. Or you can just go to a shop and grab a load of it as a sample. So I need a, you know, a meter of it. And it's all in a George Hare Clippers box. So this is the floppy drive for an Atari Mega. And the reason I have a floppy drive for an Atari Mega is that when I got my Mega ST not so long ago, unfortunately it didn't come with a floppy. It had a GoTech that someone had rather horridly installed. And if you do have a look at my earlier videos, and I'll try to remember to link it down below, You'll be able to see that abomination in how it was fitted. Uh, it annoyed me so much, in fact, and it was so useless in how it was fitted that I actually installed an OLED screen on it because I happened to uh, have uh, the OLED screens that are um, compatible. He says, Andrew, one Atari ST disk drive. It should work. Good luck and enjoy, Smithy. So let's uh, have a look at it. Um, I, I plan on, on doing a kind of a teardown if I can, just to understand it, because there's not much on them. I looked on Thingiverse to see if I could make a, like, a GoTech panel to uh, at least look sympathetic with the Atari stylings, but it was impossible to find it. So that's why before I fit it, I run and just measure this up and see if we can make a 3D printable one of these at least. Um, because one option is, I really like this idea, is that you could put uh, push a button and you'd have a fake floppy come out with the GoTech OLED and buttons on there and you can go and then literally pop it back in. So it's, that would be sweet, right? It would be sweet. And I know you want me to do that. So we're going to document this. I'm going to document it off camera, but we're just going to have a look inside it today. So part number CA7011001. Don't think you're going to learn much from that part number. I'm pretty sure you can't go and buy one off a shelf. I did hear that some of these drives have belts, so it's always good to have a quick look inside, because if it has a belt, we might want to wang a new one on. But I suspect I'm in that scenario where I do have a packet of belts. We all do, don't we, for our tape projects. A massive packet of belts. But at any one point when you need a belt, you have to go on eBay and buy another packet of belts because you don't know where that envelope of belts is. Oh, it does. It is got a belt drive and it's turned into muck. Excellent. So this wouldn't have worked out of the box. That's fine. So this is a transit disc. I do hope there's something fun on there. I, and I believe a lot of these were only single-sided or half density, one or the other. So that would be interesting to kind of find out. So I'm going to clear off some of this. And it looks to me, oh my gosh, it's like you can see there an elastic band belt. So your tape player belt wasn't going to help because it's a big flat belt. It does spin okay when you remove the chunks. Now look at this sort of capstan. Why do I say keep why do I keep saying sort of? I'm driving myself nuts. Now has the capstan dissolved or is that just belt goop? It's so hard to tell. To me, it looks like potentially there was a capstan on there. So that's gonna need a little bit of no, 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 I think it is just belt goop. Why it accumulated on that part more than the other, I don't know. So I wonder what we could use. Could we use an elastic band? I've got an idea actually, but bear with me on this. I think I actually do have an idea on how to uh, make your own belt. If you've got kids, you probably have one of these, a bit of an inner tube off a bike. I have a nasty feeling. It's not gonna do what I want. Where would you cut an inner tube if you could cut one anywhere? I suppose here would be good enough, as good a place as any. Oh, I love how a little bit of powder puffed out 
You can see where I'm going with this, can't you? And it's not going to work. Because I feel... <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. You know, it might work. Let's try. If it's really tight, definitely don't do it. Because you're going to bend something. But if it's a bit loose like this, maybe we could have a play. And I haven't cleaned up that wheel or anything properly. So it's, this is literally just... Ah! Okay. I've dismantled it a bit further. Unintentional dismantlement. Hey, this looks actually like something that could work. <laughs> Alarmingly. Oh, that would be so sweet. Look at that. It's starting to come off there though because it's not clean. I like this by the way. There's a, certainly an adapter board within here so it's converting something, Atari, into whatever this is because you can see it's just passing through the powers. I'm plugging in the power now. Okay, power on or off doesn't make any difference. I didn't even hear a peep. It's a shame. Be nice if it just did something, wouldn't it? Like a ah, uh, ah, uh, bink, bink. Oh, look though, that's cool. Get to see how it all works. All the gubbins. Here's your reed head. It's spring loaded. This pushes pushes the disc down. So this is a single sided drive because you can see the head is right there. And then there's just this thing pushing it down. I can't remember. Could you, you can't turn floppies round. So I don't know how. I guess it, it's, if it's just a single, it is just a single literally. You can't really do much with that to convert it. So if you want it to behave in any other way, we're going to have to adapt. Oh, I don't know what I've done, but I've, it's kind of working. I pull that thing off and I'm messing with it. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Uh oh, yeah, boy. Look at that. <laughs> it flung across the room. I think I think that's worth having another go. I think that's worth having another go. I didn't really clean it out properly. Um, I'm wondering if this belt is just a wee bit thick, but I've got so much inner tube. I can I can go all day. I will not let this defeat me. The only thing I notice is that the inner tube does have some nobbles, so you want to make sure the nobbles are on the outside. I actually just put them on the inside by mistake, but let's try again. Ah, oh, it's this end. It's trying to escape. I tried a few more of the old inner tube ones. It didn't work. Fat ones, thin ones. So I'm going to try an, a regular elastic band that your post comes bundled in. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Postman. <laughs> that did last surprisingly long. I'm wondering though if it's supposed to have a little twist in it or something to stop it from riding up and down this this pulley. Maybe it's me. I mean, it's weird. And these are all the same. Super fat bands. So I guess uh, you get to see what's inside. You've, you've seen what's inside. So I've, I've kind of met my obligation on that. You've, you've definitely seen what's inside. But I didn't repair it. But I kind of think I did in a way. Because it's easy to repair at this point, isn't it? You just get the right part. Ha ha ho! And we're done. That's it. I think I've finished. Job, jobs are good. In. That is so cool. It's really hard. I'm trying to look to see if you can see the floppy moving. It's kind of difficult. How do you know if it's spinning? I mean, I can see it undulating, which I think is probably as close as you're going to get. And there's a five volt. If I if I t if I attach the five volt line, it stops. I think it's waiting for logic. Oh, and that head is moving ever so slightly. It's obviously trying to park itself. Let's put it back this way. Yeah. All right. Easy enough done. So every time I push the five volts, what I think this is moving. Nah, it's just anecdotal. It's sometimes moving. That probably would work though. I Please let me know if you think that there's any reason why this shouldn't work. I mean, I'm definitely going to try it in my uh, Mega next time I have the lid off, but I think it looks okay to me. I, I don't see why it shouldn't work at all. 
I wish there were just some jumpers here we could just twiddle so that we could make it do something. Ooh, look, there's sensors here. There's a little magnetic reed switch here that detects... Ah, that detects when the disc is out, and that's probably what stops everything. And there's another magnetic reed switch here, which detects something, and another magnetic switch... Oh! Did you hear that? I remember hearing discs make that noise. I wish we could do that again, so we could see what it was. Nah. Oh well, there you go. Hope that's been slightly interesting to you. Uh, I'll let you know how I get on probably in a future video when I fit this and remove the GoTek. And I'm going to go and get a ruler and document this, this face panel so we can do something with it. Probably chuck it on Thingiverse. As ever, keep your rubber bands elasticated.